ngobrol dulu kamu ini kapan mulainya sudah mau mulai sepertinya sudah siap semuanya Are ready for seminar Everybody? Okay, who cannot speak Indonesian? Okay, perfect. So we're going to continue speaking in English, okay? First, I'd like to thank you for all of you to come today. Okay, I am John Wee. I am the publisher of Kabari. And um, it's wonderful to see you this Saturday. We pretty much we have a group of people that come all the way from San Francisco to do this presentation. This will probably be our sixth or seventh seminar in LA. In fact, we have a veteran here. Uh, Erna, where are you, Erna? She started from number one, seminar number one up to seminar number seven. Yeah, so wonderful, I love to sing. Our goal as Kabari, in the Kabari family, is actually to teach you how to become entrepreneurs. Because we definitely need, need more entrepreneurs here. Okay. And uh, with that, our first speaker is Jason. Jason Lee is an immigration attorney who's gonna talk about the new immigration law for about 20, 15, 20 minutes. And then we're gonna start our main speaker. With that, let's welcome Jason. Okay. Um, so, um, 
let's go to the next one. Uh, now, if, if you see from here, I don't know if... <coughs> can all of you see from all the way in the back? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So, um, if you see here, what's missing is um, something from the House of Representatives. Okay? So, just so you know, just for information, to, to become regulation for immigration, you need all three. Okay? The President, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. So, I think the House of Representatives is going to come up pretty soon. Uh, so, they, they all have to get together, agree on a specific proposal, and then it gets signed by the president and becomes law. So now, for now, we have just these two proposals, okay? I've set it up this way, so um, for the most part, they're pretty similar, but there are slight differences. All right, um, now let's go for the first one. Uh, Obama likes to call it provisional legal status. <coughs> the Senate calls it probationary legal status. Almost the same. Um, and pretty much similar on what you have to do. Now, um, to get into that kind of status, I, I, I would imagine that you would need some kind of application going. Um, sponsorship, uh, either from family or from um, employment. Okay, so you cannot just just because you're out of status and you just register and get that kind of status. I, I, I don't even mention that to be the case. Now the problem is, uh, neither one of these, uh, the president or the Senate proposal, never talk about what you need to do in order to get into that kind of status. So, your guess is as good as mine. So, um, but I would imagine that you need to get some kind of um, sponsorship from either family or employment, okay? Um, so that's what, so once you have that application going, then you need to pass the background check, pay the fees, penalties, and taxes, okay? So that's the first one. The second one talks about criminals and those with criminal background. Um, I don't think it applies to any of us here, so um, it's pretty much if, if you're a criminal or have criminal background, um, this, this regulation will not, you can't take advantage of this regulation. Forget about that. In fact, you may be deported. So. Let's go there. Let's go with the... Uh, next time. Next, next time, yeah. Okay. Okay. <coughs> uh, the third one. This is... This is something that those who want to take advantage of this regulation, um, if it becomes a regulation, this is this this is um, this is something that everyone has to wait. Um, currently, currently, what the, the the longest time period in waiting for a green card is a sponsorship between siblings, sponsorship between brother sister brother brother things like that, it takes about 12 to 13 years, okay? So what both proposals are saying is that you must wait behind the last one. So if those takes about 12 years, then you have to be in that probationary legal status for about 12 years before you are eligible to apply for green card. Okay, so, um, but, both Obama and the Senate are talking about increasing the number of green cards for those legal ones. Um, so it may be faster, but for now, the waiting time period is about 12 years. That's the longest. So, uh, but if you're eligible to get into this probationary legal status, the good thing is you can stay in the country, you can work in the country, uh, until you get a green card. So, at, at least that much. I'm not sure about traveling outside of the US, um, but for sure, you can stay here and you can work over here for, uh, legally. Uh, number four is the big difference between the President and the Senate. Senate, <coughs> it makes it conditional. What, what, what they're saying is, um, you can apply for a green card 
once our border is secured and we take care of the problems of visa overstays. <clears throat> now, who knows when the border is going to be secured? Who knows when we are going to be able to solve this visa overstay currently? So, uh, but the Senate is making that as a condition. Obama does not have that kind of condition. So let's hope that the final regulation is more towards Obama and the Senate. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem. Because if it, if it takes the U.S. to secure its borders for 20 years, that means you have to wait for about 20 years before you can apply for a visa. <laughs> so, okay. So that's it. But once you're at a stage where you can apply for a green card, this is what you have to do. Okay? Got a background check, taxes, learn English, and you have to earn employment. Right? Let's go to the next one. Um, some differences between, slight differences between five and six. Um, the Senate is saying that those, with, I'm not too concerned about the agricultural worker, um, more about the individuals who came as minors. Meaning that if um, we as parents uh, brought our children to the U.S. and and we all overstate their visa, okay? And obviously the kids are overstate too. Um, in the Senate proposal, those, uh, those kids, those children, uh, can go on a faster track than <coughs> a big time, okay? Whereas Obama, no, they, do, they don't make that kind of distinction. Um, he's saying that those children who came, as, uh, who came to the country um, and overstate their visa, will have to go through the same process as this regulation, which could take a long time, okay? Um, and the last one, number seven, talks about a special green card for those who um, get their higher education, uh, PhD or master, in this science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, okay, so that's, that's, on the, that's on the green card side, so let's, let's Go to the next one. Um, I I have to go through all this with, with you uh, because there are some that may concern some of us here. Um, on the employment verification, um, tar both of them are targeting employers who knowingly hire undocumented workers. Okay. Um, the only good the good thing about the Senate proposal is the three over here. Um, they, uh, they actually give some uh, uh, advantage to those businesses. Um, you know, they, they, can, they can hire low-skill workers um, as long as Americans are unavailable or unwilling to fill these jobs. Okay, so... Um, what kind of example is that? Um, Let's say uh, you want to hire a janitor, and no Americans wants to uh, work as a janitor, and you can show proof the employer can show proof that no janitors, no Americans wants to work as a janitor, then the employer can hire foreign janitors to work in their company. So that's that's a good thing. Obama doesn't talk about that. All right, let's go with the last one: border protection. Um, and the Obama proposal, um, it's not good for those overstays. Because, for example, right now, if you overstate your visa and you get, you get caught, um, you go through the uh, court process of deportation. Uh, you can apply for asylum, you can apply for um, um, suspension of removal, uh, things like that. Um, or withholding of removal um, and do all that. But under Obama, um, probably not. You will be deported pretty quickly. Okay? And under the Senate proposal, they talk about making sure that we have an entry exit system in the US. Uh, currently, you go through immigration, actually, not immigration, it's Customs and Border Patrol, CBP, when you come into the uh, airport. 
um, and they check your passport, your visa, and the stamp on it. But when you leave, you just leave. You get your boarding pass and you go. Now, uh, under the standard proposal, uh, you, you probably have to go through another CDP to leave the country. Okay, so act, enter and exit. Okay. Uh, that's about it. I uh, hope that's about 10 15 minutes. <coughs> that's my presentation. Um, uh, I, I have some details um, and out, uh, which is actually outside uh, with Jesse. So if any one of you uh, interested in learning more about either the Obama or the Senate proposal, you're more than welcome to just pick one up and read it for yourself. And you can go to the last page. Um, and and if, if you have any more questions, you can call me and, or email me, and um, I or my staff can answer your questions. And that's it. More details, specific to your cases. So, um, for right now, if any one of you have some general questions, um, I, I can answer them for about maybe 15 minutes or something. How yes. much do you touch? <laughs> oh, consultation. Uh, for consultation, for something like this, it's free. Yes. Yes. Anyone else? General question. Yes. Uh, can you explain about the waiting period? Waiting period. <clears throat> In Indonesia, please. If you don't mind, thank you. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I should ask again. How many of you are Indonesians here? Berapa orang Indonesia ya? Setengah ya mungkin ya. Okay. So I apologize if I speak Indonesian to those non-Indonesian, okay? Because I'm about to speak Indonesian. Okay. Um, waiting period setiap setiap uh, untuk mendapatkan green card. Um, biasanya tuh uh, ada kategori yang bisa langsung dapat green card. Ada kategori yang harus tunggu green card-nya. Contohnya, kalau seseorang itu menikah dengan US citizen, itu tidak ada waiting period. Tinggal waiting period untuk proses yang take work aja. Oke? Okay? Tapi contohnya kalau uh, dari saudara, uh, kakak mau sponsorin green card untuk adik, nah itu harus ada waiting period. Karena um, green card yang di berikan tempat dari kongres itu sangat kecil <coughs> sedikit jadi yang contohnya yang ngeplanya itu seribu orang tapi geringkatnya hanya seratus gitu jadi yang seratus dapat yang sembilan ratus tidak dapat dulu gitu jadi terpaksa harus tunggu tahun depan tapi tahun depan sama juga seribunya ngeplay geringkatnya cuma seratus jadi masih kurang lagi terus 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 begitu terus jadi makanya yang untuk kategori brother sister itu dia punya kuotanya tuh terlalu kecil sekali makanya harus waiting periodnya kira-kira 12-13 tahun no choice um, maaf pak, Jadi, uh, maksud saya yang dijelasin di Obama di TV itu kan dia bilang waiting period you know back in the line gitu. oh yes yes, itu um, jadi istilahnya Um, kalau 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 kita ini um, qualified dalam program ini sebelum kita mendapatkan green cardnya sebelum kita nge, bisa ngeplay untuk green card uh, kita harus tunggu sampai orang semua orang yang uh, bisa dapat green card dengan cara legal cara yang legal itu semuanya sudah mendapatkan green card dulu baru dia yang bisa dapat green card. Istilahnya begini, pemerintah itu tidak mau yang dengan cara ini motong barisan. Karena yang lainnya itu akan mengatakan nggak adil. Kenapa saya ini yang disponsorin oleh kakak saya contohnya? Kenapa saya harus tunggu 12 tahun? Kenapa yang ini hanya ilegal saja ngeplay cuman dapat keringkatnya dalam lima tahun contohnya nggak fair nah, jadi terpaksa yang bisa dapat keringkat dengan cara legal itu harus dapat dulu barunya ini yang terlengkap 
begitulah. Makasih. Sama-sama. Saat ini kan masih proposal kan? Masih proposal. Ya. Um, antisipasinya mungkin sama. Ada lagi? Any, any, anything else? bisa sponsoring orang tuanya itu bisa dapat keringkat mungkin kira-kira 6 bulan cepat tidak ada wajib pilih apa juga tidak juga tidak juga tidak perlu juga tidak perlu terima kasih dan sama oke give Jason the big hand number three they get beyond something that they feel may be an issue And number four, they believe they can acquire energy customers. Okay? That's what successful uh, acquirers are doing. Why is it important that you acquire a lot of energy customers? Number one, your belief in the ACN opportunity. Your belief in the ACN opportunity. I remember when energy first launched, Darren and I became energy customers, boom, right away. And I'm telling you, it excited us. Doing the whole process and seeing the ease of it was exciting. You know, we had two homes on gas. Over the year, we saved money on both homes. That's exciting. It makes me more excited about going out and getting more customers. It makes me so proud of what we're doing. Okay, you're going to be setting an example for your team. Did it go bye-bye again? There we go. Um, hmm. I don't know. I think I'm not in the right place. Am I good? Okay. Let's see. There we go. Okay, the effects of a team who is excellent at acquiring customers. Okay, I want you to write this down. Teams that acquire energy customers. The effects of it. Number one, you're going to earn a higher residual income. Number two, your team is going to earn a higher residual income. Number three, you're going to have loyalty and longevity in your team. Let me tell you what holds somebody in the business when their team isn't growing with business owners. Anybody want to guess what it is? Residual income. I'll tell you what, you have a team member that has 50 customer points and they're making 10% on their own customers. If they are having a check come in every month, guess who's staying in the game longer? Absolutely, okay? IBOs that get a lot of customers are always better recruiters because of their belief. I'm going to tell you that Darren Jr., when he started ECN, I tried to like sway him away from it because I didn't want him to quit school at the time. But while Darren and I were at a COC meeting, he snuck onto my back office, watched all the videos about all the different services that ACN offered, grabbed a stack of customer acquisition forms, went out, got them all filled out. And when I came home from the COC meeting, he said, Mom, do you believe me that I'm ready to do this now? <laughs> And here's what happened. He had costed all those customer forms out, and on some of them, it was $50 a month of savings. Some of it was $100. And I'm telling you, he was even more fired up to go recruit. Guess how Darren recruited? Cold market. Some of you are scared to talk to your friends and family. Do you know that he was so bulletproof because of his experience of how he was able to help customers that allowed him to go recruit people that were 40 and 50 years old that he didn't even know. He recruited a multi-millionaire that he didn't know from the gym and a very successful businesswoman that was 45 years old in a bank because his belief in what he was doing was high because of his experience with customers. <coughs> okay, that's what this is going to create in your organization. Attitude is everything. First of all, to be a good customer getter, you've got to be excited about your opportunity. You have to be excited about it. You have to believe in what you're doing. You want to use and teach. Write it down. Use and teach. Use and teach the correct approach. Focus on long term. Focus on long term. Don't get emotional. 
think like a business does. Some will, some won't, some way, so what next? And you want to make sure that when you're getting customers, you have the mindset that you're sorting, you're not selling. We're going to teach you how to sort. Okay, energy industry, advantage to, the advantages to you. Number one, it allows you to participate in an area of business never before possible. <coughs> That's what energy is for us. It's the modern day gold rush. This is an opportunity we haven't had. In California, we haven't had it. Many of the states, we're going to have it and they've never had it. That's exciting. It allows you to earn money residually on energy, energy bills that people are already using. I love energy because there's no contract to it. Guarantee you, you're not going to have to call somebody back and ask them if they still like hot showers. Okay? It's simple. We're not asking anyone to do anything different than what they're already doing. Everybody <laughs> is paying an energy bill. And I'll tell you what, if you want to be really, really wealthy, call your friends and relatives on the East Coast where we're offering electric services. Because the SVP COC members over there asked to know. They were bouncing off the walls at the COC meeting about how their residual incomes have gone up because of electricity. It's ridiculous. Now, it's simple. Ener uh, let's see. Let me click her. Energy, well, no, no, yep. Okay, the energy industry, advantages to customers. So those are the advantages to you. Advantages to customers is they're going to be allowed to exercise choice. Many people don't even know that they have a choice. They're going to have improved customer service, more creative pricing and plans to choose from. Hopefully everybody in this room knows if you're a pg and &E customer, you don't even have a chance to lock into a fixed rate. Not at all. So customers are getting choices that they've never had before. The goal of ACN's energy is to save customers money long term. And I'm going to explain that a little bit better in a minute. If I can get this to click. There we go. Okay, Zoom is simple. Customer experience is no changes. So if you take a customer from Comcast to Direct TV or anything like that, they're having a change. The beautiful thing about energy is your customer is not having a change. There is no change. It's a simple online order process. The monthly bill is provided by the local utility still, so nothing changes there. The customer service is still provided by the local utility. The distribution, delivery, and maintenance of energy is provided by the local utility. And Zoom just simply provides the energy. Okay, now, are there going to be challenges? What do you think? Yes. Is the deregulation of energy a new thing? Yes. yes. Is it new for ACM? Do you think when we first launched digital service, how many of you have a digital, uh, a digital phone box, by the way? Okay, so I want you to imagine this. <coughs> Nine out of 10 of the IBOs you start get their box and they don't work. Our first year business, that was our experience. That was it, because digital service was new. They all sucked, it didn't matter what company you were with. It was all bad. Do you think there were challenges? Do you think there were IBOs that got really pissed off and wanted to quit over that? Do you think I ever thought about quitting over that? Absolutely, yes, I did. Okay, I had to go through challenges there. And I remember Brave saying, Jen, if you will just have the mindset of long term where digital phone technology is going to be, I guarantee you, you are going to make millions of dollars on this technology. But we've got to work the bug guts out. See, here's what's happening. You're driving down the road, Jen, and you just had a bug gut land on your windshield. Boom! And you're staring at the bug gut, and you're so focused on the gut that you can't even see the road and where you're going. He's like, step back and just focus on the road and you don't even see the bug guts. <laughs> wow. Hey, bug guts. I can do bug guts. This is all right. Hey, are there some bug guts with energy? Yeah, there's some bug guts. You guys, this is new. But I want you to think about digital phone technology. Do you know that today, if you go to Inc. Freeport for 2013 or 2012, or Forbes or Fortune, all of them list as the top 10 industries to be involved in voice over IP digital phone service number one. What if we had all given up because of the bug gut? 
Okay? Those of us who hung in, we made millions. Will you hang in and make millions? Yes. Okay, so what I want to teach you today is how to get around the bug guts. Because if you guys can get around the bug guts, you're going to make a crap load of money. Warren Buffett has said that the biggest transfer of wealth in history is going to be the deregulation of energy. So if you want to be a part of the biggest transfer of wealth in history, then you've got to figure it out. And you've got to hang in for the long haul, just like we did with Voice Over IP. So, first of all, you have to have this mindset. Any business worth doing is going to be challenging. Yes or no? Yes. But does challenge create opportunity? Yes. Yes, it sure does. Okay, you want to do your homework. The more you actually understand, the more success you're going to have. If you get confused, so will your prospects. Learn about the market that you're in. Learn how the energy business actually works. Learn about variable versus fixed pricing. Understand what the Zoom introductory rate is. What's the difference and the value between Zoom and your utility? Get familiar with what is going to commonly be asked of you regarding it. Learn the online order process. Set your, your customers' expectations appropriate. Don't over-promote. Do not over promote. I want to choke people when they say things like, save, 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 save. I want us to all change our language. You ready? Say the word competitive value. We're going to give our customers a competitive value. Do you believe across the board that ACN offers a competitive value on our services? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay? Um, you want to make sure that your customers know that a, an online credit verification may be required. That's important, so they're not shocked by it. Now, when you go to get customers, it's very important to understand, and you're gonna see, I, I put a handout on everybody's little table <coughs> or chair there. So you should have a little handout that has these happy little apples on it. Okay, you want to know that your customers are going to fit into three categories. Only 10% of your customers are just going to be like, woohoo, sign me up, yeah, okay? 10% are red. 80% of the people that you approach about being a customer are green. That means they're going to want to have questions answered. And then 10% are just rotten. Honestly, somehow it turns them on to make you feel upset about this. I don't understand it. But you know what? Just if you found a rotten apple on the ground, you wouldn't look at it while the worm was crawling out and go, man, somehow I think I can make you red. No, you would throw that apple on the ground and go pick some more, okay? Now, sort, don't sell. Okay, next one. If I could make my clicker. Why use the correct customer acquisition approach? Because if you do, it's going to work uh, with the majority of the time with the majority of the people. It will work if you guys use it, okay? It's very easy to duplicate. When I saw this approach from Tony Cooper a couple of weeks ago, I almost peed my pants. I was so excited because it's the exact same way that Darren and I cleaned house on customer acquisition our first two years in business. See, when we had local long distance and we figured out we could just market the long distance part, that little tiny bit part, okay, it was so easy because the customer had nothing changing, no upfront cost, no long-term commitment, just do me a favor, try my service. If you don't like it, I'll help you go back. Like, it's simple, and we can do that with Energy Now. I'll, ex I'll explain to you, but I will tell you, Janelle Persant and I, Ken Kaylor and I, Debbie Jr. and I, man, we'd sit with our new IBO, you guys, we'd get them 20 points, boom, in a city in two hours. Long distance was only worth one point, so we got them 20 customers in two hours. 20 customers, 20 houses, because the approach was so stupid simple. You guys are going to freak out when I teach you this. It's good stuff. Okay. Customer acquisition approach. First, make your list. Make your list. This is all written down on the paperwork that, I'm, that I gave you. So just read through it here. You want to use the script. Use the script. You're sorting red, green, and brown. Red apples, you're going to sign them up right away. Green apples, answer their questions. 
things and go back to the script, brown apples, throw them on the ground, stomp them around, and move on. No, don't worry, just move on. Okay, script, keywords, favor, help, try. Men, I want you to say help. I want you to say it louder. Great, because you guys have huge issues with this word. Huge. You would rather drive around lost for an hour than ask help for directions. So, men, would you rather be wealthy and ask for help or drive around lost in this comp plan for 10 years? You tell me which one. Thank you. Everybody say these together. Favor. I'm calling you, it's important. I have to ask you a huge favor. 
Taylor, can, can you do me a huge favor, Janelle? Okay, I wait for the response. She says, sure, then I'm going to continue with the script. If she says, what do you need? She's probably going to be really excited when she finds out that I don't need to borrow money to start with. Okay? <laughs> if she says anything other than something positive, then I'm not going to talk to her anymore about it. Okay? Listen, I'm, I'm about to qualify for a promotion with a company that I represent, and all I need is to get a few more customers right away. I was so excited to call you, Janelle. Listen, if I can offer you a service that you're already using, there's no upfront cost, no commitment whatsoever, and there's a guaranteed savings your first month. You guys following that right there? Uh-oh. Can you do me a huge personal favor, help me out, and give the service a try? Oh, it's awesome. Okay, great. Now, hold on. She's a red apple. How come my little clicker is not clicking right? Hold on. I think I'm going too fast. Can you guys get me to the red apple? I'm just spazzing out with my finger, I think. Can you go to the next one? Okay, now go back. Go to the green apple. I guess there is no red apple. Okay, so she's a red apple. I'm going to take her right to the online store over the phone, okay? If she's a green apple, here's how I'm gonna handle it. I'm gonna answer her question, and then I'm gonna follow it up with asking the favor again. Sometimes we answer the question, and then we stop. No, then we gotta re-ask for the favor, okay? Calmly ask questions. Maybe she's gonna say, hey, what service or services are you offering? I'm gonna say gas or electricity services. But more importantly, can you do me a huge favor, Janelle? Help me out and give it a try. It's just a try. If you don't like it, I'll be the first one to help you go back. You have no idea how much this would mean to me. We're trying to get Darren to a, a position where he can just be home enough in the evening to help coach the kids' football team this summer. Would you do that for me, Janelle? Jake, would be so excited. Okay. What if she asked, am I going to save money after the first month? How many of you wonder that? Am I going to save it? It's guaranteed for the first month, three to five percent savings on the flex plan. The flex plan, whatever that is. Flex plan. That is guaranteed the first month. Also, ACN is waiving the two ninety nine charge for us the first month. Just so everybody's aware, what the two ninety nine charge is about. Let's be clear about this. Ready? Here's what it is. California is the worst place ever to do energy business. The 299 fee doesn't apply in the other states because they don't need it to. When you get a customer that pays less than $14 or $14 or less on their gas bill, ACM loses money. And the average bill in the state of California for residential gas is $14.50. Okay? So the 299 charge is to protect your opportunity. So here it is, you guys decide, because I can take it back to the co-founders, would you rather have the 299 and be able to offer gas or not have it and we just won't do any utility services in the state of California? Right? Okay, so I want everybody to be clear about what it is, that's what it's for. It's to offset so that we can actually offer gas services here and not have our company shut down or our, our gas part shut down, okay? Am I going to save money after? So first month, you guys, there is no, there is a guaranteed savings. No 299 charge. If they do the flex plan, three to five percent guaranteed savings right there. Okay. Am I going to save money after the first month? Well, let me help you understand. With Zoom, the utility and all energy companies offering variable plan, variable plans, prices are always going to change from month to month. Some months Zoom may be higher and some months they may be lower. But it's really important for you to know that Zoom's goal is to save you money over the long term. If you are happy, unhappy for any reason, you can always switch back to your utility. But more importantly, can you do me a huge personal favor, help me out and give it a try for at least a month. If you don't like it, after your first month of guaranteed savings, I'll help you go back. Isn't that easy enough? Absolutely. You guys need to know that is Zoom's goal. Zoom's goal is that over a one-year period of time, they're going to save our customers money. Is that a good thing? Okay, let me solve another mystery for you. Any of you frustrated that the variable rate does not show up online now? Yes. 
Okay, you want to know why? Yes. Because we complained the other direction. They had it online, and then people were calling saying, by the time my customer's energy thing showed up, it wasn't what it said on the screen anymore. Okay? So understand, whatever's showing on the screen, the rates change every day. So by the time they're hooked up, it's not going to be what it is showing on the screen anyway. And then people get mad because it's different than what it said. So ACN said, we'll solve that. We just won't show it anymore. Now we're all hyperactive going, I can't believe they're not showing the rate on the screen. <laughs> Poor ACN, they can't win with us, I tell you. Okay, so just understand, ACN did us a huge favor. They said, you know what, we're not going to confuse people that way. We're just going to guarantee them 3 to 5% the first month. If they want to lock in at a variable rate, they can see that because that's a guarantee. Okay? More importantly, can you do me a huge personal favor and give my service a try? Commonly asked question, next one. Why should I try your service? I don't think the pricing is worth changing. Well, you know what? Like most services, the energy business is really competitive. In fact, one of the most important reasons to try Zoom is to exercise choice with the deregulation of energy. Listen, trying another company promotes competition. It should drive down energy prices, you know, all the way around the board. Um, when you try another company, it, you know, when companies compete for your business, it benefits you as a customer by number one, customer service improving, and number two, more value for you as a customer. But more importantly, Janelle, can you do me a huge personal favor and just give it a try? And then Janelle says, well, who is Zoom anyway? And I say, listen, Janelle, Zoom's an energy supplier who offers natural gas, electricity, and renewable energy to residential and business customers just like you in deregulated energy markets. <coughs> But more importantly, could you do me a huge personal favor and just give my service a try? If you don't like it, you can go back. Well, what's an energy supplier anyway? Well, let me just tell you, you're pissing me off right now. <laughs> For Janelle, an energy supplier is a company that acquires its electricity, renewable energy, or natural gas <coughs> supplies from the wholesale market and sells it to residential and business customers. But you know what I really want to know is can you do me a huge favor and give my service a try? Well, what's the difference between my utility and Zoom? Well, let me tell you. The utility still operates the local distribution, wires and pipes, which carry electricity and natural, natural gas to homes and businesses. An energy supplier simply purchases and supplies energy, which is then delivered to your home or business by your local utility, you know? So do you think you could just do me a huge personal favor, give my service a try? Okay, well, what do I have to do to try the service? Well, listen, it's very simple. You just complete a simple online order process, and I'm going to help you walk through it. But more importantly, can you just do me the huge personal favor, help me out, give my service a try? You know, I'm really happy with my current provider, right? But you know, I promise you that you will be just as happy with Zoom Energy. And if for any reason you're not, you can leave Zoom at any time. The most important thing for you to know is that you would just be doing me a huge personal favor if you would help me and Jake and Darren Sr. out and give our service a try and give Darren the chance to maybe coach his son's football team this year, you what if my power goes out? <laughs> is my service ever at risk with Zoom? There is no risk with Zoom Energy because the local utility actually services and maintains the gas and electricity. If you have any issues such as an emergency or service outage, you call your local utility as you normally do. And you know what, Janelle, it would just be the biggest favor if you just shut up and give my service a shot. your paper over, all this is on there, just so you know. How, you know, what's the difference between fixed and variable pricing? Well, fixed rate plan provides you with stability and peace of mind, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Can you give me a personal favor give my service a try? understand this a little bit better now or at least what Zoom's point is what's going on here 
You guys, when we were so successful at getting people 20 points right out of the gate, we had a Q&A form just like you're looking at for what questions customers would ask us about local and long distance service. And we would hold that right in front of us while we were on the phone asking for it. I highly recommend that the minute you get a new business owner, this form is given, it, given to them. You can find it on the dreamteamsystem.com website, just so you know. And uh, I am telling you, you guys, so important for you to understand, it's about the favor. It truly is about the favor. People are elevated when they know they are going to battle for a cause for you. Did you notice when I slipped in the part about Darren and Jake, how it all changed? How many of you have done a favor for somebody that you knew was going to change your life or you really knew was going to help them and it, it made you feel good? Yeah, absolutely. It feels good to know that you're doing good for other people, but you've got to let them know what it is you're working for. This is such a risk-free approach because people can go back if they don't like what they have. There's, there's no risk attached to it and you can feel so good about it. So that said, in my opinion, I, well, I'll just tell you, Janelle and I were dying laughing during the whole thing. Tony Cooper was talking about when he used to get bonus promotions in the insurance agent, agency industry, whatever, he would have to like, he tried to get, you know, if they got 10 new clients, they'd get this big bonus. And he'd have to ask people to sit down, do the paperwork, and then somebody is gonna come and draw your blood, and you know, I mean, all this whole hoopla, you guys were talking about a simple three minute process. This is not a big deal. I guarantee you, you can get so many more customers than you are getting. Guarantee you, it's just getting them done, and the better you get at this, you guys, the better you are gonna be as trainers for your team. So I'm going to give everybody in this room a personal challenge. You guys up to it? Okay, I am going to challenge you to go home, use this script, and get five energy customers this week. Here's what I want to do. I want to use the testimonies in the Saturday training marketplaces the next week, and also I want to give Greg Provenzano some, um, some testimonies that we may be able to use at the international event coming up. And I also want them on the Monday night conference call. So please get with your RVP, get their phone number, get them text when you're having results so that we can share what's working and what's happening in the marketplaces. Don't forget to be committed to share with your market leaders. Number one, what training do we need on Saturday training? Here's the obstacles we're having. Let them know. You guys, your RVPs, a lot of them are not out getting customers right now. We got our customers a long time ago. So make sure you let us as leaders know what you're needing so that we can help you and get the information from you and let us know what's working so we can pass it on. That said, and we're gonna wrap up the event. I wanna invite anybody that has not yet turned in a pre-registration form that does not wanna miss this event uh, to come on up with it right now because, and I'll have Darren come up and bring the other forms so we can do a drawing real quick. We're gonna do a quick freebie drawing so anybody that has turned in a form or turned one